don't wonder why offsprings resemble their parents. This concept can be answered through the topic genetics. What is genetics? Genetics is the study of heredity and variations. Heredity is the transmission of characters or traits or features from parents to offspring. Variation on the other hand is the difference among individuals of the same or different species. So genetics is the study, heredity is the transmission, variation is the difference. Please take note of all of these terminologies. Although scientific evidence for pattern of genetic inheritance did not appear until Mendes' work, history shows that humankind must have been interested in heredity long before the dawn of civilization. Curiosity must have been based on human family resemblances such as similarity in body structure, voices and gestures. Despite these interests, the first recorded speculations on heredity did not exist until the time of the ancient Greeks. Some aspects of the ideas are still considered relevant today. And we are going to look at some of the great personalities that contributed immensely to the history of genetics. Hippocrates is regarded as the father of medicine. He postulated the theory of pangenesis, which believed that all the organs of the body give off seeds, and these seeds can form the offspring. Later on, scientists will come to discover that these seeds are actually called genes. So in a way, we can say that Hippocrates was correct, probably was limited to the advancement of technology in his time. Another person we have to look at is Aristotle. He emphasized the importance of blood in heredity. He thought that the blood supplied regenerative materials for building all parts of the adult body and that the blood was the basis for passing on this generative power to the next generation. He said that the men's semen was the purified blood and that a woman menstrual blood was the equivalent of the semen and that when the main semen and the female menstrual blood comes together, they can develop an offspring. During his time, things like um, bloodlines and blood ties were mostly used to communicate. And so we found out that Aristotle contributed, as well as Hippocrates, to the history and development of genetics. The next era is going to talk about the millennia between the lives of Aristotle and Mendel. Two millennia exist between the idea of Aristotle on heredity and Mendel's ideas from 322 BC to 1866 AD. I hope you are following the class. And so, we are going to talk about the preformation idea. Scientists believe that they could see miniature or small human inside a spermatozoa's head using a microscope and this developed in the female body. As you can see, the head of the sperm, yeah, looks as if there's a male or a baby inside. Another scientist called Lama, he believed on the inheritance of acquired traits, though this was stated as an explanation to evolution, not heredity. That was Lamarck's own theory. He postulated this theory in 1809. Another notable scientist was Phenetics. Phenetics proposed four key theories of nature, or we call them genetic laws of nature. And these theories are 1. Healthy and robust animals are able to propagate and pass on their specific characters to the next generation. He also believed that traits of grandparents can resurface even in future generations. And he also said that even though animals may have desirable traits in a, in a generation, they can have freaks in other generations. He also knew that traits can be carefully selected to produce animals with desirable characters. The segregation of characters that we later came to know through Mendes' work was already laid as a foundation through Phenetics' work. We also have to take note of the society that contributed to his ideas. That is the ideas of Imre Phenetic Dutuna, <laughs> is a French name. In order to properly understand what phenetics did, you have to think about traits that can be manipulated through inbreeding. Let's say, for example, you take a particular black sheep and inbreed it with a particular white sheep, and you want a mixed character. You'll be able to separate the progenies that have that mixed character and make sure that they breed amongst themselves to continue to produce what you want. So it was from this phenetics idea 
that farmers started breeding and getting exactly what they want from their animals okay because charles darwin is credited as the father of natural selection of evolution he believed in pangenesis which was earlier postulated by people creatures however august Wellsman from the year 1834 to 1914 poses or posed the greatest challenge to pangenesis and actually discredited it he believed that organs do not develop seeds and transfer them to their progenies using mice uh, as an experiment he cut or removed or we can say excised the tail from mice and then the mice was able to give birth to progenies with with complete tails and so this supported that pangenesis was not um 100% accurate and so he proposed the germplasm theory that state that multicellular organisms consist of two types of cells the germ cells and the somatic cells the germ cells are of course contained in the ovaries and the testes and then the somatic cells are also called the body cells they carry out the ordinary body functions the somatic cells can undergo mitosis which is just a simple cell division in which two daughter cells are produced the germ cells themselves can undergo meiosis. It's also a type of cell division in which four daughter cells are produced. So you are going to look at mitosis and meiosis later, but you need to distinguish between the somatic cells and the germ cells. Of course, Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel is credited as the father of genetics. Before his experiment, every other theory has been a speculation i think apart from wellsman's um scientific experiment so gregor Mendel used garden p for his experiments but why did he use garden p why well here are some of the possible reasons why he used garden p number one the pla the pea plant is a self-pollinating plant it has a short life cycle it can be grown in large numbers with very little resources it has contrasting features or characters like you can see, short plant, tall plant, and all of that. Johann Frederick was the first to isolate nuclein, now known as DNA. DNA is known as diazoribonucleic acid. It's a double helical structure. It's a polymer made up of nucleotides. And you can see the structure, double helical, like double spiral structure that has ladders inside called um, nucleotides. You go the various Carl H. Correns, and L. von Taxman were the three scientists that rediscovered Mendel's work in the 1900. Please take note of these three key scientists. Frederick Griffiths suggested that bacteria are capable of transferring genetic information and thus bacteria were used as molecular vehicles known as vectors to transfer genes from a species to another. Parrot and Barbara were the ones to just suggest that chromosomes form the basics of genetics. Chromosomes themselves are like DNA that is wound around histone proteins. So we can say that the DNA plus histone proteins are chromosomes. Quite alright. Harvey and McCarthy also reported that the genetic material of the cell was DNA. And when you look at the structure of the cell, you can find the chromosomes and the DNA in the nucleus of the cell. Shaw Goff discovered the components of the DNA appeared in a one-to-one -one ratio. This means that there are some certain bases that must be paired to each other. A must be paired to T and G must be paired to C. So you can say at GC just to remember. When Rosalind and Raymond conducted an X-ray diffraction study, just to identify the image of the DNA and they reported that it was actually double a double helical structure. James Watson and Francis Crick in the year 1953 determined the molecular structure of the ozorobonucleic acid, that is the DNA. R. Smith and Daniel discovered the restrictive enzymes which cleaved DNA into fragments. They were called restriction enzymes. Harlan and Frederick developed some of the first technique for sequencing the DNA. To sequence DNA means to arrange the exact number of bases that is contained within the DNA. 
PCRO, also called a polymerase chain reaction, was developed by Carrie B. Miles in the year 1983. It enables scientists to amplify a specific section of the DNA. Then, of course, in the year 1990, the Human Genome Project began, and it involved the mapping and sequencing of the entire human genome. That is, the scientists was able to know all the biological information or contained in the DNA of a human being. The international project was completed in 2003. The Human Genome Project led to the identification of numerous genes and provided insights to the genetic basis of diseases like sickle cell diseases and all of that. The International Upman Project was designed in the year 2002. In 2007, scientists had data on numerous variations in the human genome. In the following year, which was 2008, researchers had begun the 1000 Genomes Project. The aim was to sequence the genomes of a large number of people from different ethnic groups worldwide, with the intent of creating a catalogue of numerous variations. And so that is the end of the class. Please do not forget to subscribe and if you have any question, you can write them down on the comment section. Thank you very much.